Hey guys, it's Girl God Game. Welcome to Soul Set. This has been developed by No Bread Studio, and I believe this is their very first game. I was intrigued. I saw the trailer and I was like, oh man, this looks way up my alley. The characters look awesome. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd give it a go. Uh, now, full disclaimer, <laughs> I actually recorded the first episode of this last night and then discovered that it didn't record my audio. So and this is my second time going through this now. So you won't be hearing me bumbling around trying to figure out who's talking and figuring out voices and stuff. So if you enjoy that kind of thing, you're going to miss that. So apologies. But on the bright side, I probably sound a little more refined as I search for the word. Yeah, let's go with refined. Because I know what's who's talking and I won't be as confused this time around. So without further ado, let's get into this mystery visual novel. New game. So disclaimer, this is a work of fiction. Names, characters, businesses, places, events, and incidents are either the products of the author's imagination or used in a fictitious manner. Any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, or actual events is purely coincidental. Aside from Mutic. Mutic is based off of a real cat, whose name was also Mutic. And I haven't run into him in the first few minutes of this game yet. <laughs> and warning. This game contains content such as strong language, blood, violence, disturbing content, use of alcohol, partial nudity, implied sex, and sexual content. Player discretion is advised, and viewer discretion, in this case as well for all of you, is advised. Notice, please note that this game doesn't have an autosave function. It is advised to save frequently using different slots, and I am well prepared from my days with nameless and amnesia. <laughs> Okay, so we actually start off from a guy's point of view, and I won't ruin who this is yet, but in case you're like, why are you talking like that? I don't actually s start off as the protagonist of this game until a little later. My lady, my lady, please, wake up! Marika, wake up! <sighs> There's our protagonist, Mariko. Severely injured. Thank the heavens, she's alive. Mariko, can you move? Ow, ow. Barely, but I'll be fine. More importantly, Damn it, Ishin. You're bleeding so much. We need help. Mariko, I need you to calm down. They have done you no harm. And that is what mo is most important right now. I was unable to save your mother, though. I apologize. What do you mean? What did... Where did we end up, even? Is this the forest outside of the mansion? There's smoke in the distance. Don't tell me it's coming from our house. Listen to me, Mariko. I understand all of this must be very hard for you to accept right now. But I need you to hear me out and do as I instruct. Time is of the essence. You're not going to die, right? You're a big, strong dragon. You kept me safe all those years. And I don't know yet if, like, what the relationship is between Mariko and this dragon. I don't know if they're companions, if he's a protector of some kind, or what the deal is. But yeah, Ishin is a, is a dragon. And I was like, what? The first time I played through this, so you missed me freaking out. There's no way you can die like this. Mariko. Don't you dare die on me, you hear? 
Do you see that bag lying a few feet away from us, my lady? Uh, that one? Yes, take it. And inside the bag is a vial and a dagger. There's a small glass bottle inside. And a dagger? What do you want me to do with these? I want you to come closer to me. Fill that flask with my blood. Cork it well. Hide it somewhere on you. Do not ever lose it. It should be of value to you if you ever find the need for it. I received a vial of dragon's blood. What? Am I supposed to sell it for millions? Ishin, gathering your blood isn't really helping us with treating your wounds right now. Ishin? Ishin, don't you dare stop talking to me! Don't! No, please, no! You can't leave me! Hmm, hmm, hmm. What do we have here? Who? A black dragon is a rare sight these days. I'm impressed to see one. The state he's in aside. Who is this stranger and why is he here? There's something odd about his aura. It's like his very being doesn't belong here. Aside from that, who are you? Necromancer. Huh? What's a... My, my. You're good, dragon. How can you tell? He seems amused with this whole situation. That is far from a good sign. If only I had some strength left. Leave the girl alone. I beg of you. Oh my. A dragon begging a human. You flatter me. But where did you get the idea that I wanted to do anything to this girl in the first place? To be honest, I was just passing through the neighborhood, only to notice a burning mansion and a pair of dead bodies lying nearby. Oh, actually, I didn't notice this the first time around. I assume the pair of dead bodies is probably Mariko's parents, then. I saw a half-dead dragon out. <coughs> Ishing? Hmm. That doesn't sound good. We were... We were trying to get away from someone. Uh. And... Voice has changed, so we have changed now to our main protagonist. For knowledge! Where am I? This was some kind of cave. There's a campfire burning nearby. And the person we had met earlier is sitting right beside it. This guy. Who I was like, oh, you're going to be the first one we do. But then I did some research afterwards and was like, nope. Even though he's on the title screen, he's actually like way down the line. We can't do him for a while. Oh, that is one thing I forgot to actually mention in the prelude. I'm just going to take a little segue here. This game operates off of clues. So you have to go through different routes to find clues to unlock what the, the overall mystery is behind the story. And everybody, I think, has a bad ending. At, at least one bad ending, if not more. Um, a normal ending and a true ending. And some of them you have to do their bad endings to unlock those endings. And I don't know which characters that's necessary for. So I'm just going to go off of the premise of trying to actually get everyone's bad ending first before moving on to a normal and then a true ending. <laughs> which is going to be a first for me, actually trying to get a bad ending right off the bat. But instead of trying to do some guesswork and be like, oh no, I got the bad ending, is that... Uh, oh no, Does that is that a good thing, bad thing? <laughs> I'm going to try and shoot for a bad ending and then try to unlock normal and true ending. But I can't do that for this guy just yet because he is locked behind a lot of clues as far as I've been able to tell. So, okay, back to the story. Brrr. You're finally awake. Where... 
Oh, where are we? Where's Ishin? <laughs> you should know that better than I do. Well, maybe he's still tired from the ride. Don't worry, he'll answer to you eventually. You mean he's... Inside of you, yes. His soul, that is. Truly? I don't feel any different, as far as I can tell. I can only take this man's word for it. What are the odds that he's lying to me? Hungry? You might want to eat something after that little ordeal. You've been out for a while. I won't argue. I'm actually starving. Though I am smart enough to know that one shouldn't be taking candy from strangers. Even if it's bread. Bread candy? Mm. I think I'll take my chances. After all, if it wasn't for this person... I mean, he could have killed you any number of times already. Say, mister, how did you do that anyway? You must be some kind of powerful magician. <laughs> Who knows, maybe I am. Would you teach me how to do it? <laughs> my, my, kids these days. It would take years of practice, sweetheart. Well, that's a bit of a deal breaker. I can't possibly imagine this person staying by my side for that long. Or staying by my side at all, for that matter. I need to figure out what to do now. The mansion was up in flames, and from what Ishin said, my mother didn't make it. Mm. And from what this guy said, it sounds like my father didn't make it either. But maybe someone else survived. I need to go back. I remember there were caves in the vicinity of our house, so we're probably in one of them. We can't be that far away from the mansion. Who are you, anyway? When asking someone's name, shouldn't you give yours first? Ah. My name is Marco Blerno. He wasn't... He wasn't thrilled with that. You're from the Blerno family. Why does that surprise you? Did you know my... No. I never met your parents, if that's what you want to ask. Not personally, at least. I just heard some stories. Stories? It hardly matters right now. I'm Father Falenci. It's nice to meet you, Marco. Feather. We've met Feather. Now this part, I'm not sure of, and you'll see why in a second. I'm not entirely sure who is saying this, but I'm going to go off of the assumption it's this new character that we're about to meet, and who also happens to be the first route we're going to do, now that I know that Feather is locked for a while. Marco? Hey, Marco. Are you alright? Feather? Nope, not Feather. <laughs> As you can see, you guy. No, you're not... What the... Gods, my head feels like someone had stuffed it with bricks and cotton. Is this how a bad case of a hangover feels like? I can barely concentrate. And whoever this guy is, I don't recognize him. But he knows our name. Who are you? How do you know my name? Do I know you? You don't remember either, huh? Hmm. What is that supposed to mean? Okay, where do I start? We got thrown in here for some reason. It seems nobody can remember anything. Nobody? There are other people here besides us. Other people? Wait, where is here exactly? Uh, beats me. I'm as confused as you are. I'm not inside of the cave anymore. Though it still feels like I've been in it barely a minute ago. No. That doesn't feel right. My earlier encounter with Feather feels like some kind of distant memory. Or even a dream, perhaps. Which is it? I can't tell whether it was even a real occurrence or not. This looks like an alchemist workshop, if I ever saw one. The air around here is heavy. There's dust everywhere, but the tables look like they have been used just recently. 
Are we in some kind of underground laboratory? None of this makes sense to me. Okay, baby steps. What's the last thing you remember? I will agree to your request under one condition, Necromancer. Oh. I will give you my blood. In return, you will not lay a finger on Mariko. And you will take her to a healer once this whole ordeal is over. Hmm. That's a hard bargain you drive, Dragon. But, oh well. I suppose that's fair enough. I'm willing to agree to your conditions. You're not just saying that, are you? Of course not. Sincerity is not one of your strong points, is it, lad? Oh, but I am completely sincere. Is there anything else you feel like pointing out? Or can we finally stop waiting for you to bleed to death? Savage. I remember that we were attacked. You were attacked? By whom? I don't know. We made our escape, but Ishin was wounded. Ishin? A companion of mine. Oh. Perhaps he's also here then. No. That would be impossible. He didn't make it. Ah. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. And then I was inside of a cave with... Cave? Ugh. Shit. Why can't I seem to remember anything else? My childhood, my parents, anything regarding my life. What the hell? I can't remember any of it. Marco Blurno. That's my name. But who am I and how did I get here? It's all a blank. Why can't I seem to recall anything else? My head. I don't... That bad, huh? Take it easy, then. Maybe we're under the influence of some kind of spell. A bunch of people losing their memories at the same time isn't exactly something that could be considered normal. You don't remember anything either? Nope. It's a little scary, to be honest. And I was like, hella suspicious of this guy, because I'm like, you know, you knew our name and then distracted us with a whole bunch of questions and factoids. And then conveniently, like, I, I don't remember anything, although I know you for some reason. But hey, at least we're not alone on this shaky boat. Whether that's a good or a bad thing. Two minds are always better than one, right? Maybe we can figure things out together. And I'm like, well, if I'm gonna do your route, I guess. But I am super suspicious of this guy. I suppose. Working with someone I don't know, though. I'm not sure how to feel about the idea. Can I trust this person? My instincts are telling me to be wary. Who are you? Ah, manners, manners. My name is Marco. And I'm like, that is really similar to Marco. I'm like, did you just make this up because you're like, uh, what would be like a male version of Mariko? Oh, I'll just drop an I and put a C instead of a K and hey, hey yo, my name is Marco. <laughs> and that's the only thing I recall about myself, it seems. Marco. Yeah? Is something wrong with it? Somehow, the name sounds familiar to me, though I'm clueless as to why. Could it be that we've met before? Or that it sounds oddly similar to our own name? No, it's... nothing. Well, it's nice to meet you. Even if I'd prefer for us to meet under brighter circumstances than this. How do you feel, aside from the confusion? Are you hurt anywhere? Do you think you can stand? I think so. Guess it would be rude to dismiss an offered hand. Let's not do a repeat of the Damien incident. I'm actually eager to get back on my feet. The floor is hard and cold and definitely not a pleasant place to keep sitting on. Wait. Whoa! What in heaven's name is this? Is that supposed to be jewelry? Memories gone missing or not, someone should honestly reconsider their fashion choices. The claw thing aside, 
don't recall my hand being this big. Wait, don't tell me. She's so much older now, and such long, luscious hair. It's been a while. It's been a few years, apparently, though, since our last memories. Um, you look like you've just seen a ghost. Are you okay? Am I? I'm honestly not sure at this point. I'm pretty sure I was younger than this in the memory I saw. Just how much of my life did I forget about? Marco? How old do I look to you? <laughs> Is that a trick question where I'll get punched in the face for getting it wrong? I'm serious. Oh boy. Well, I'd say that you're somewhere in your mid-twenties? A bit younger than that, perhaps. This is a little baffling. And the only thing I seem to be able to recall, I was 14. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, Marco, what's with the crazy and airy smile? <laughs> Yee! Yikes, this whole memory loss thing is worse than I thought. Well, don't worry about it too much. I'm sure we'll both get our memories back. Eventually. Perhaps Yishin can give me some answers. You mean the companion of yours? Didn't you say he was... Ugh. Ugh, my head. And down she goes. Whoa, hey! And we flash back again. What do you want from us? If you didn't come here with the intention of helping us, then please leave. I see, little one, aren't you? I'm no healer, sadly, but I may have an offer with a solution for you two. Solution? Hmm. Would you like me to perform a soul link right? <gasps> so, what? What is that? Seeing that your friend here will be dead in a few minutes at best. I could link his soul with yours and transfer it into your body. Then his soul would live on, together with you until the day you die. As you probably imagine, such things don't come without a price, though. Going through with this rite requires a lot of vital energy. It would shorten your lifespan by half. From that point on, your body would alter twice as fast as a normal person's usually would. In other words, I would get to live to my 50s at best. Uh, assuming you don't die by other unnatural means somewhere along the way, yes. Still eager to go through with it. I wasn't born yesterday. In all honesty, that almost sounds like making a deal with the devil. However, even with this person's odd aura, he can't be a demon. Demons don't have green eyes. As everyone knows. Where's the catch? And I would assume the catch is, well, you only have half your lifespan now. Oh yes, we have voice A and voice B, so you get to miss all the confusion of me being like, who are these people? I can give them their voices knowing who they are. This whole thing is a load of horse shit. I vote that we go outside and beat the crap out of that barrier until it gives in. I don't feel like staying here another single minute. This place gives me the creeps. Can we really do that, though? Of course we can! Sitting on our asses and waiting here for God knows what won't solve anything. I admire your energy, Miss Shura. And I despise your submissiveness. Show a bit of spark, girl. Oh, that's a relief. It seems like Miss Mariko is finally awake. Great. More people in places I don't recognize. Why does this keep happening to me? Am I about to find out that I'm an old grandma this time around? Where am I this time? You're upstairs in the main hall. Mr. Marco and Mr. Apras carried you up here when you lost consciousness. I lost consciousness. That explains a lot. Oh, wait. No, it doesn't. Hi, 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 hi. Wait, who is Apris? 
Who are you? My name is Yvonne, and this person here is Miss Shura. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> oh, dear Miss Shura. Just don't get too friendly with me. It's a waste of effort. Please forgive her. She's not taking the whole thing too well. It seems we're all in the same kind of predicament. It gets people on edge. You mean that you don't remember anything either? And you have no idea why we're here? That's right. So where is Marco? And this... Apris? Mr. Marco went down to the basement to investigate it further. Mr. Apris went out to the courtyard to see if there's any other way out of here. We decided to stay here and watch over you just to be on the safe side. Okay. Wait, what do you mean by another way out? Well... Someone set up a stupid magical barrier around the whole place. Can you believe that? We're trapped in here like some rats. Whoever thought this was a good idea is getting a punch in the face from yours truly. And here's Mr. Apris. Oh, Mr. Apris, you're back. It's no use. The barrier is a sphere. There's no getting out of here until we dissolve or break it somehow. So we're inside of this stupid bubble. Great. Did you try kicking it? I did, actually. It didn't budge. Well, if it's no use, then it's no use. Oh, Mr. Apris, this is Miss Mariko. She just woke up. Miss Mariko, this is Mr. Apris. Hey. You good? The kid said you almost hit your head when you fell. Um, this is what I picked. I'm fine, I think. More importantly... Hey, I might need some help here! I found another one! Another one? Seriously? Just how many unlucky people ended up here? Wait here. And here we find the last person of our team. Oh dear, what happened to her? I found her like this at the end of the corridor. I treated her wounds for what it was worth. She's unconscious, but alive. Is there anything we can do to help her? For now, our best bet is letting her rest. Even if it turned out that one of us can use healing spells, we'd need to have our memories intact to be of any use in that regard. You think one of us might be able to cast healing spells? The possibility is always there, isn't it? I don't know, Marco. I feel like you know something. Regardless, we can keep an eye out for some fresh bandages. Assuming there are any around here. Otherwise, we'll need to use cloth or sheets to keep her patched up. Mr. Apris, would you mind putting her down on the sofa? She doesn't seem to have a fever, at least. That's good. Well, there's not much of a point in staying here and worrying over her. We still have the rest of the building to investigate. I suggest staying in a group, or at least not going anywhere alone, for safety reasons. But it's mostly your choice. Also, one person might always overlook something. That's actually a good idea. Aside from more potential victims, who knows who, or what, might still be lurking in this place. And nobody would be tempted to pull any suspicious shit behind everybody's backs while having someone to watch over them at all times while we're at it. That too. And since you kindly point that out, Shira, would you mind teaming up with me for the time being? Har har, if I must. I wanted to check what's upstairs. We might as well go there first. After you. <laughs> Let's do her such trouble. Mr. Apris, would you be alright with checking this floor with Miss Mariko then? I wouldn't mind staying here and keeping watch over this girl. If she were to wake up, it would be good for someone to be with her. Let me be the one to do that then. I'm feeling a little dizzy. I could use a few more minutes of rest. Ah, alright then. Are you sure you'll be alright on your own? Yes, just go. Come on, let her be. Well, try not to take long. 
is okay. That's one lie told. Though I guess it's not much of a lie when my mind really is in a state of a mess. I just need a moment to think in peace. All right, we've met everybody. I've caught up to where I had ended the first time I recorded this. So I'll stop it here for now, guys. I hope you're enjoying what you've seen so far and I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, see you later.